So let me ask you then, um, hindsight and all that, if, there's, if you could go back to James Foster in 2020 in March, <laughs> okay, and give him some advice on how he needs to pastor his church, um, what would you say to, to 2020 March James Foster? I think the thing that I would do different going back to March 1st, knowing what I know now, would be to be a little bit more forceful in teaching people to prepare themselves uh, to, to be, what, stronger in their relationship with God for anything that could happen, for mm-hmm. whatever could happen. Because to me, I'm thinking, boy, I, should, I, I would focus more on making sure people know that uh, the way God, well, God is, is letting us know that this world is not going to be the same years from now the way it is now before it comes to an end. Mm. And it, there could be a lot more challenges that people have to go through in that. So, so I would want to be more active in getting people more prepared for what's to come in terms of the end of times. Mm. So looking beyond just the hardship that people faced in 2020. Oh, yes. But you're, you're saying you would have you would have wanted to prepare people more for the fact that in eternal perspective, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Exactly. And so if I, I'm thinking if I can get them ready for the eternal, with the eternal perspective, that would have them prepared for whatever is in between. I lost two siblings to COVID uh, in 2020. Uh, Tamitra and I were close to losing our own lives in a car accident in 2020. Head on collision and see that we could have been gone in an instant had that gone different than the way it went. And we came out with just scratches and bruises. And, and, uh, and so to me, God seems to be getting my attention about the fact that uh, there is a, there's an urgency that needs to be continued, developed, and, and, and focused on uh, for people to give God a chance for people to believe in him. There's an urgency for me to do whatever I can to let people know believing in God is the right thing to do. We aren't guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And that makes us urgent (laughs) to help other people realize that there's urgency in their lives too. Exactly, exactly. And and I am appalled at the people who don't seem to be sensitive to these thousands of lives that are being lost by this virus. Mm. And the insensitivity that's showing up in just a little thing of not wanting to wear a mask, not wanting to do the social distancing, and that selfishness overpowering those kinds of things. And so the lack of value of lives of other people, I'm just, it's just, it's just kind of mind blowing for mm. me to see. It is much more work that needs to be done to, give, to get people to give God a chance. Yeah, John would say that how can you love the God exactly. that you haven't seen if you can't love the brother that you can see? Exactly. Um, this is how we know we love God and that we belong to him, <laughs> that we love one another. Um, exactly. I, I, I'm with you on that, that putting God first requires me to love my neighbor mm-hmm. because nope. he loves them. Exactly, no matter what he looks like. Yeah, <laughs> or what he thinks he what believes he thinks in. What he thinks he believes in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're so quick to focus on those differences. But boy, my goodness, if God made a person, that person is important enough to him, ought to be important enough to me.